Amen. So today, I just want to speak to you about, let, let me put the title on the screen, an encounter with the God of Jacob. This is the topic that God has been speaking to my heart. I want to tell you, church, right in the beginning, uh, this might be a sermon that I prepared, but this is absolutely a cry from the bottom of my heart. This is a declaration of faith from the bottom of, of my heart. So whatever words I want to say here today, this is truly a declaration of faith, and this is a cry from the bottom of my heart. Hallelujah. How many of you are looking forward for an encounter with God? Can I see your hands, church? How many of you will need a true encounter with the living God, with the King of Kings? You know, what does the word encounter mean? Encounter simply means you run into somebody. You run into, for example, when you go for shopping, when you go to shopping, you run into somebody unexpectedly. And then you say, I, I met somebody, like, you know, uh, without even expecting. So this is exactly an encounter is running into God, God-like situation. So I'm not talking about huge moments where you always see open heavens with the throne of God and all those. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about small encounters, those moments where while you are driving, while you are cooking, while you are at your workplace, while, at, while at, you are at your university, you're in the class, you suddenly feel a weighty presence of God coming upon your life. Hallelujah. I'm talking about those encounters. How many of you will need that church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I truly know that these encounters are not for no reason. This truly transforms your heart. If you need a direction from God, you need an encounter. If you need your heart to be transformed, you need an encounter from God. Hallelujah. You know what? You cannot survive on an encounter that your husband had. Do you believe that? You cannot survive on the encounter that your sister or your, or your brother or your family member had. You need to have your own personal encounter with the King of Kings. This is my cry, church. I cannot survive on pastor's encounter, but I need my own personal encounter with the King of Kings. Hallelujah. This, is, this should be a need of our life. You've got to pursue behind it. You have to go behind it. Hallelujah, these moments are absolutely precious. You know what? While Israelites could see the, the miracles of God, what God did, Moses was a person who had a divine encounter with the, with the Lord. He had face-to-face -face encounter. So there might be people who might be just watching miracles happen, but they don't have a personal encounter with the Lord. I do not want to be in that group. I want to be like Moses. I want to be like that Joshua who stayed back in the tabernacle, who had a personal encounter with the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles may not transform us, but do you believe encounter can transform? Do you believe one touch from the Lord can change your life? Do you believe one word from the Lord can change your life, church? The Samaritan woman's life got radically changed with just one encounter with Jesus. Saul had an encounter on his way to Damascus. Just one touch, one encounter with the Lord changed his life. Moses had a face, as I said, Moses had a face-to-face -face encounter with the living God. David had an encounter. John the Baptist had an encounter. Elijah had an encounter. So all these people, when we see in the Bible, before they were released into their purposes, before they were released into the calling, they had a one-on-one -on -one encounter. Hallelujah. Can I also just go ahead and say encounter will take away every bitterness of your heart. Am I speaking to somebody? If you are carrying loads of bitterness towards your family member or anybody for that matter, one encounter of the Lord will take away that bitterness from your heart, church. You will be able to forgive that person completely. You won't even remember what the person did to you. Hallelujah. If you are a person where you have not cried for years, one encounter with the Lord, your heart will be broken. You will have tears shedding out from your eyes. One encounter is more than enough to mold your heart. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. An encounter with the Lord brings healing. An encounter with the Lord reconnects you to the purposes of God. Reconnects you to the calling of God. It transforms your character. That's what an encounter does. You will never be the same person again. How many of you will agree with me? 
you will never be the same person again your ministry the face of your ministry will be changed you will have boldness you will have equipping and also it will bring you back to that constant relationship with the lord constant one on one relationship so listen to me as i say these words so if you are a person who's looking who's praying for a for an encounter with the lord this is highly significant highly important and this is the time for it this is a season do you believe that i truly believe our youths our young adults our children in the days to come will have an encounter and i'm truly prophesying that in jesus name they will have an encounter in genesis chapter 28 verse 10 to 21 are you happy church yes. hallelujah if you have your bibles please take your bibles genesis chapter 28 verse 10 to 21 in esv version yes so let me read this jacob left beersheba and went toward haran and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set taking one of the stones of the place he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep and he dreamt and behold there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of god were ascending and descending on it and behold the lord stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac the land on which you lie I will give it to you and to your offspring your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed verse 15 behold I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back back to this land for i will not leave you until i have done what i promised you can we read that together for i will not leave you until i have done what i promised you then jacob awoke from his sleep and said surely the lord is in this place and i did not know it he was afraid and he said how awesome is this place this is none other than the house of god and this is the gate of heaven was 18 to 21 i'm just uh, because of lack of time i'm just going to leave it we'll come back to that let me give you a quick background we all know the story we all know the story of jacob let me just revise uh isaac is now 40 years old when he married rebecca and you all know rebecca was barren she didn't have children so they pleaded with the lord and god answered their prayer and god opened rebecca's womb and right now she is pregnant with twins in her womb right do you all know the story she is right now pregnant with twins in her womb so all of a sudden one day she feels a struggle within her womb okay like a mighty battle happening within the womb people who have who have had twins you might know but this is more than that <laughs> so there's a battle happening within her womb you know ideally if this was happening at the present day situation you would take them for a scanning for an ultrasound scanning but that didn't happen that day Uh, Rebecca inquired from the Lord, Lord, what is happening in my womb? What is happening? What the battle? What's what, what what is happening in my womb? And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two people from within you shall be divided. One shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. So it's not just two babies in your womb, there are two nations. how many older siblings are here in this house in this house do you want to serve the younger one no oh, no chance no way <laughs> so this is what the lord said the older shall serve the younger so uh, then you know the story where rebecca delivered the twins are born the first one who was born is called esau he was very red he was covered with thick hair like a fur coat the second one who was born is called jacob why is he called jacob because when he was born he was holding the heel of the older child he was holding on to the heel of the older child that means that, that purely shows that jacob wanted to be born first he wanted to come first so that is why his name is also called his name also means supplanter that means you do not allow the other person to progress but you're trying to pull them down you're trying to pull them down okay so that's what the name jacob means and then you know the boys grew up Esau became a skillful hunter but I uh, um, sorry Jacob became 
a very, became a mama's boy. He was in, I mean, living with his mom, okay? A very tempered boy, a very soft boy. So the Bible says, Isaac loved Esau, but Rebecca loved Jacob. I know how many of your parents have got partiality towards your children. That's a very, my kids sometimes ask, do, who do you love the most? It's very difficult to answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, so this is a little bit of background. Secondly, you see, where Jacob stole Esau's birthright over a pot of stew. So the fight that started from the womb is carrying on, okay? It's, it continues. Now you've got to understand the birthright is very important in Hebrew culture, in Hebrew tradition. The birthright of the firstborn is very important because the firstborn in the family is the one who inherits the father's possessions. The firstborn in the family who gets, who, who gets to have the authority. He's the one who gets to lead the family. He's the one who gets a double portion of the father's inheritance. The other children might get a portion of it. But the firstborn gets a double portion of the inheritance. So it's pretty important. The, birth, the, the, the blessing of the firstborn is pretty important in those days. So now you can see Esau just gave gave it away to Jacob, the younger one, just over a pot of stew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So thirdly, we see Jacob, he's still not satisfied. He's going after the blessing of the firstborn. He's still, he's craving for the blessing of the firstborn. So now you need to know the blessing of the firstborn in those days. It is a pretty serious business. It is the, the, the father would pronounce the blessing verbally, but it is like a written contract. It is equivalent to a writ written contract. So let me carry on with the story. I'll get, get to the word. Okay. Genesis 27, you know that uh, Rebecca, Rebecca now schemes a plan. She kinds of uh, plans um, uh, in such a way that she, she and Jacob, they deceive their blind father, right? So Rebecca goes and says, tells Jacob, your father is almost ready to give the blessing to the old, the firstborn. He is almost ready to give the blessing to Esau. So I want you to get the blessing. I don't want him to get the blessing. I want you to get the blessing. So what does Mama Rebecca do? She goes and cooks a hot plate of lamb roast. Lamb roast, mashed potato, you know, it's all. <laughs> the meal is complete with a glass of wine and everything. So she sends it through Jacob. She even kind of gives him a makeover. She gives him a, a fur coat of the skin of uh, the, the goat, the, the goat skin, so that the father will not know that it, that is, uh, it is uh, Jacob. Okay, so she does all these things. So all these things is happening in the background. All this is done to receive the firstborn blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So now I'm not sure how many of you all know this, how many of you all wonder. You know, the parents definitely knew that the blessing, that, that the younger one will be serving the older one. They already know that Jacob is going to come uh, to the forefront. But why all this struggle happening in the family? Why all this deception? Why all this scheming? And why all this planning happening in the family? Can I tell you, God's purposes had to come out of this. God's purposes had to come out of this. We need to know that God, the, the scripture says, God loved and chose Jacob. He hated Esau. The word clearly says, God hated Esau, but he loved, he chose Jacob for his purposes. Hallelujah. If you read Romans 9, there's a beautiful chapter that tells about God's selection. Why does he select the, 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 the race of Israel? What, what's the reason that God selects? So all that we need to know that God has chosen you and me. Church, um, are you with me? God has chosen you and me. The reason that you are sitting here is because God chose you. You would have been somewhere else in a bar. You would have been somewhere else in another place, but you are seated here because God chose you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God loved you. God chose you. The word says he loved us while we were yet sinners. Do you believe that church? He poured out his love while we were yet sinners. Hallelujah. The word says we were Gentiles, but what did he do? 
the, we were branches of the wild olive tree, but he grafted us. He took us out from the wild olive tree. He took our branch out. He grafted us among others so that we can receive the blessing of Abraham. Isn't this a mercy of God today, church? Isn't this a grace of God that's been poured out into your life? Isn't this the eternal love of God that has been poured out into your life? Because he has grafted us, we are now able to enjoy the nourishment, the fatness that comes out from the, from the, from the, from the promises of God. Hallelujah. So what do we see here? What do we see here? God is beginning to change the order. The younger one, God is choosing the younger one above the older one. Hallelujah. God is changing the order. What rightfully belonged to Ishmael came into the hands of Isaac. Do you know that story? What rightfully, Ishmael was the oldest, but God decided to change the order. It came into the hands of Isaac. How many of you believe you're not worthy for the blessing, but God chose you? Today, can I prophesy that God is going to change every order? Hallelujah. You might be the last one, but God is going to bring you to the forefront, church. You might be the last one at your workplace, in your family. Maybe, God, maybe the people have neglected you. Maybe the people have just despised you. But can I tell you, do not despise humble beginnings. Do not put down anyone. You cannot put down a child. You cannot put down anyone for that matter. Because if God decides to choose and bring, choose and choose and bring, and um, decides to bring a person to the forward, nothing can stop that. Nothing can stop that. Hallelujah. What rightfully belonged to Reuben, who was the oldest, came into the hands of Joseph. You all know Joseph was made the ruler of Egypt. Reuben was the oldest, but that didn't go to him. What rightfully belonged to Manasseh came into the hands of Ephraim. Hallelujah. What rightfully belonged to David's brothers because they were older came into the hands of David because God chose and anointed David for his purposes. Hallelujah. What rightfully belonged to Aaron came into the hands of Moses. And you all know Moses became the greatest leader in history. Hallelujah. What belonged to Gideon? What belonged to the older ones came into the hands of Gideon, came into the hands of Solomon. You know the story of Peretz. All those stories shows that God, if he decides to bring you forward, nothing can stop. Can I hear an amen, church? Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah. So the story goes, as soon as Esau finds that Jacob stole his blessings, hallelujah, and father has no more blessings reserved for him, he begins to get jealous. He begins to get furious. And now his only purpose is to kill Jacob. Jacob's life is, in, is under threat. The older brother's intention is to just slay him, to just finish him off. Hallelujah. So that's when Rebecca, the mama Rebecca, comes into picture again. She overhears about Esau's plans. She, may, she tells, she senses, I mean, she discusses the plan with Jacob and she decides to send him away to Haran, to her brother's house. So this is where it says, uh, Genesis 28.3. So Isaac is sending him with a blessing. He says, God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may become a company of people. May he give the blessing of Abraham to you and to your offspring with you that you may take possession of the land of your surgeoning that God gave to Abraham. So let me come to the first encounter that Jacob had. So now Jacob is out of his house. He's out of his house. He's traveling all the way to Haran, to Rebecca's brother's place. So can, I, can someone put the map for me, just for your understanding, so you can get a picture of how he's... So you see the, the place Bethel? So that is where, from there, uh, he's traveling, from Beersheba, he's traveling all the way north to Haran. That is where he's traveling to. But on the way, but on the way, so you know, you, I mean, just imagine the situation. Jacob is fleeing because of the fear of his older brother, because of his fear of life, okay? So the man who has many promises in life is now fleeing in fear. He's got tremendous promises in his life, but right now he's running away. He's running away in fear. Hallelujah. So the word, as we read that, says the sun had set. I'm talking about the first dream that Jacob had. 
at Bethel. The word says the sun had set, darkness had set in. How many of you are going through such situation? How many of you are going through such spirits of darkness in your life, church? It's, it's in those spirits of loneliness that God wants to have an encounter with you today. There might be nobody to help you, no answer to your prayer. And you might be wondering, Lord, I have this tremendous promises in my life. You are the one who told me you're going to give me children. You're the one who told me you're going to, you're going to give me this job. But where are my promises? The sun has already set. Everything is dark. There's nobody with me. He's alone by himself at Bethel. And that is when God decides to provide him an encounter. God decides to give him an encounter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Amen. So the, the story, the, as, we read, as we read the scripture portion, it says, Jacob took a pillow of stone. How many of you have slept on a hard pillow? <laughs> Did I see your hand? Oh, good. Okay. At least one person. But we all have pillows, you know, posture, pedic pillows. We have gel pillows. We have different kinds of pillows. But I've not slept on a hard pillow. It must be pretty hard. Jacob did not find anything else to rest his head. He found a stone, a pillow of stone to lay his head. And he slept. And then that's when he's seeing the dream. So can I prophesy you today, church? The pillow of hard, the, the hardness, the struggles that you're going through today. God is going to turn that into a testimony of his goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. The pillow of struggle, the pillow of tears, the pillow of pain that you're going through today, God is going to turn that into a testimony of his goodness. A testimony of his miracle working power. Amen. Today it might be hard for you to sleep. You might be your pillow must be soaked in tears. But just believe the Lord is going to open doors in the days to come. With that same pillow will be turning into God's testament of his goodness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So Jacob, he's, you know his name, he's a deceiver. He's a con artist. He is the person who has deceived his father. He's, he's carrying that name, he's carrying the brand on his forehead. He's taking the pillow, he's lying down on a, to, to rest. Hallelujah. That is when he dreamed. He dre what, what, what is he dreaming? And behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Now, can I tell you, church, Jacob is fleeing in fear from his brother. So this is a horizontal problem. But God is opening up a dream where he's setting up a ladder. He's, he wants Jacob to look up not to his brother, not horizontally, but he wants him to lift up his eyes and look vertically to the heaven. Hallelujah. That is what when the word says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Church, when situations are overwhelming you, you don't look to other solutions. You lift up your eyes to the heaven. David says, I will lift up my eyes to Heaven, where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. So Jacob is seeing a vision where a staircase, a ladder is set up. The top of it is reaching heavens and the bottom of it is on the earth. Church, can I tell you, God has your back. He's, he has everything covered. Everything from the top to the bottom, everything is covered. When God is in it, your situations are all covered, church. Hallelujah. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending. Hallelujah. He's not a God who will meet you midair, but he's a God who's going to cover it all from top to the bottom. Hallelujah. He will meet you where you are, exactly just as how you are, and he will meet you in your, in your need in exactly what you need from him today. That is my God. Hallelujah. So Jacob, you must be a deceiver. You might be a failure, but I got you all covered. The angels are ascending. So notice the order. It's not descending and ascending. It is ascending and descending. 
So can I tell you, church, can I prophesy to you? In your situation, when you are calling upon the name of the Lord, when you are worshiping him today, the worship, your praise is going up. Your praise is going up and the blessings is going to come down. The answer is going to come down. In your situation, that, that might be a sacrifice of praise. It is not, maybe it's not an easy praise for you. Maybe it's not an easy worship. But as you are seated here, when you are lifting up his name, when, when your praise goes up, the angels of God are carrying it. And they're descending down with the answers. Your victory is coming down. Your praise goes up and your victory comes down. Your praise goes up and your answer comes down. Your prayer is going up today to the heavenlies. And your answer is coming down from the heaven. Angels are ascending and descending. Can you imagine? That's, that's what is happening on the ladder, on the staircase. And let me, let me just uh, go forward. And then you see the, this angelic encounters, as I say. How many of you want angelic encounters? Church, believe there are angels at work for each one of you. They are ministering spirits. They are at your command. So truly believe, Lord, I need an angelic encounter in my family. I need an angelic encounter with my children. I need an angelic encounter in my job situation. And that's going to happen in the days to come. I truly believe that. Hallelujah. Then the word says, at the top of the stairway, I love this. The Lord stood and said, you know, the word Lord is Jehovah, the self-existent one. He is Jehovah, the self-existent one. And when you're in your going through your situation, there is an open heaven, there is a stairway. And at the top of the stairway is Jehovah, Yahweh, the self-existent one. The word stood, the very word stood means he's stationed in by appointment in fulfillment of duty for you. He's taking a stand. He's taking in a pride position. He set himself, he set, he's established his feet. He's standing for each one of you. Danny, can I say for your situation, God is standing up for you today. God has established his feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's standing up for you. And the word says the Lord stood above it and, and, is, and is repeating the promise that he gave to Abraham. The ground you're lying down belongs to you. I'm giving it to you and your descendants. He's repeating the promise. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. Jacob, through you, the families of the earth will be blessed. Your descendants will be blessed. And then it says, I am going to be with you. How many of you want to know the power of I am with you? How many of you all want to know the power of God with you, church? <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's a, wherever Jacob went, because God was with Jacob, his finances multiplied, his cattle and his herds and his livestock all got multiplied. Wives and children, not wives, we don't want multiplication of wives. <laughs> children multiplied, his family grew. And it says the land was in terror the Lord sent terror in the land because of Jacob and his family. God protects you. If God is with you, he's, he's going to be a protector. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So again, as I said, Genesis 20, 15 says, Behold, I'm with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. God is reminding Jacob, you might be fleeing from your, from your, from your land right now, but I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you back, Jacob. Hallelujah. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. So this is something that the Lord told me. This is a prophecy for the church. I will not leave you until I have done what I promised for you. Hallelujah, church. Can I get a response from this side of the... If there's anyone who is praying for the promise of God to be fulfilled in life, the word says, I will not leave you. I will see that. The promise that the word that I've given you will be fulfilled. This side of the church, do you believe that? Do you believe every word? Is there anything impossible with my God? Is there anything too hard with your God? Every word, every word that he says, he sticks to his word. He's faithful to his word. The word, God is with you. The word is Shamar, he watches like a watchman. 
he watches like a watchman he keeps his the, he keeps the boundaries around you he preserves you like a like a like a guard hallelujah what a privilege do you believe you have a promise keeper do you believe your god is a mighty promise keeper church i have experienced that in my life every promise what the lord has been repeating that in my childhood when he said i could not even believe a tinge of it but right now when i see the fulfill fulfillment of of, the, of those promises i can only thank him i can only praise him i can only give him glory hallelujah so uh, genesis 28:16 we are in the same chapter jacob awoke from his sleep and said surely the lord is in this place and it, i did not know it he was afraid and he said how awesome is this place this is none other than the house of god this is the gate of heaven so what did he do early in the morning jacob took the stone that he had put under his head he set it up as a pillar and he poured oil on top of it he called the name of that place bethel hallelujah church can i tell you that gate when he said this is the gateway to heaven the gate is an entrance this building has got many doors you see this building has got many doors so there's many entrances but here the gateway to heaven there is only one gate and do you believe in the new testament when jesus said i am the door i am the gate no one comes to the father except through me do you know that hallelujah i'm going to connect this this is a beautiful revelation i'm going to connect this with the new testament we have the lord's table in front of us so be be extra I mean, don't lose your attention follow me okay so um as i said sorry i lost it okay so gate gate is the entrance of the jacob is saying this is a stairway this is a gateway to heaven gate is the place where transactions happen church do you believe that gate is a place where communication happens transactions happens you 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 communicate to god what your need is that's where the transactions happen and then he said this is bethel the house of god beth means a house el means god this is bethel the house of god so this is the first encounter let me go to the second encounter of jacob uh, that's mentioned in genesis 32 so now you all know 20 years jacob is living in haran in the north side uh, um, where rebecca's brother is living he's he's been with his uh, with laban his uncle is also like him he is also a deceiver he is also a schemer just like jacob so jacob found his match in his uncle how many of you have an uncle like that <laughs> so he spent 20 years so during this 20 years what is happening his his family is multiplying his livestock his wealth is multiplying like crazy after 20 years after 20 years the lord is instructing jacob to go back to the place where i called you God is asking Jacob to go back to Bethel. Go back to the place where I called you, where I talked where I talked to you and build an altar there. So now Jacob is packing everything. He's you can imagine the entire family like you know there's a pretty big multitude of people. So he's packing everything. He's leaving Haran and is going on his way to Canaan to his father's birthplace. and now jacob on his way he decides to meet his old remember esau the older brother who wanted to take his life he decides to go go meet his brother esau hallelujah so now you you all know the story where jacob strategizes he sends gifts to the brother in order to uh, please him to in order to make him happy so and then we see jacob's prayer to god lord i ha- i'm not worthy of all your unfailing love i'm not worthy when i left home and i cross when i cross jordan river i owned nothing except a walking stick now my household fills two large camps i'm not worthy you have blessed me you have blessed me lord how many of you can say lord i came to canada with two suitcases but now you have increased me you have blessed me <laughs> hallelujah go ahead church come on give him thanks give him glory give him praise I came with two suit suitcases or I came with just this many things but the Lord has multiplied me he's increased me he's increased my wealth he's blessed me Jacob is saying but Lord I am afraid of my brother he's acknowledging his fear but he says Lord you have this promise over my life you have said this word over my life 
It is true that I'm fearful. It is true that I'm afraid. But I believe in your word. I believe in your promise. So that night, Jacob sends his family, all his possessions, everyone to the other side of River, River Jabbok. Can you all say that with me? River Jabbok? River Jabbok. So Jacob has sent them all to the other side of the river and Jacob is all by himself once again for the second time. The first encounter he had, he was all by himself. The second encounter, now Jacob is all by himself at the stream, at the, at the brook of Jabbok. Hallelujah. And then it says in Genesis 32, 24, this left Jacob all alone in the camp. And a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of his socket. And the man said, let me go for the, da for the, da for the, da for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man is asking him, what is your name? And Jacob said, my name is Jacob. I'll come back to this. Your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, for now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and you have won. Hallelujah. I'll come back to the rest of this, the portion, scripture portion. But can I tell you, Jabbok means place of pouring out. It's a place of emptying church. The very word Jabbok means you're pouring out, you're emptying out yourself. So God has brought Jacob to a place of where he's, a, where he's emptying himself out completely. He's tripping you out completely. Hallelujah. You might be in a position where God has tripped you out of all your pride, all your achievements. Your achievements mean nothing to you. You're in that position. I do not know who I'm talking to, but the God of Israel wants to have an encounter with you. In your moment of emptiness, where you, don't, where you don't have anything else to show, in that moment of emptiness, God of Israel wants to have an encounter, a personal encounter with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So second time, when Jacob encountered with the Lord, as I said, he was all alone. Nobody's with him. No family, no possession, no inheritance, nothing around him. It is like Jacob is saying, Lord, I have the birthright with me. I have the blessing of the firstborn. I have everything I need, but I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied with the blessing that I have right now. Lord, until you bless me, I'm not going to leave you. Church, can we come to that position? Can we come to that point in our life today? Lord, I have everything that I need that might look like a blessing, but there's something that I'm missing in my life. There is something, can I talk to the youngsters today? There is something that you are missing in your life. God wants to empty yourself completely. Empty your pride. Empty whatever you have. Set it aside because the God of Israel, God, the King of Kings, wants to have an encounter with you. And can this prayer rise off out of your heart today? Lord, until you bless me, until you bless me, I will not leave you. It says the man wrestled with Jacob until the break of dawn. Why is he wrestling for? What is the need for the wrestle? For the wrestle? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As I said, God wants to take us to that place of emptying, of letting go, of stripping yourself. Hallelujah. So this is, the, the, the scholars say this is one of the theophanies of Christ where Christ himself appeared in person. So whenever it says angel of the Lord, that means it's Jesus Christ himself. So here, the scholars say this is Jacob wrestled with Christ himself, with Jesus himself. What is the purpose of this wrestling? When you read verse 25 to 29, it says, Jacob, what is your name? I mean, sorry, the angel is asking the, uh, Jacob, what is your name? The angel exactly knows, knows what his name is, but he's asking, what, what is your name? And then you see Jacob is saying, my name is Jacob. He might have told that sheepishly, I am the deceiver. That is what my family has been calling me. My family has been calling me a cheat. My family has been calling me a crook. My family has been calling me the name, you know, because of what I did. But the angel is asking, the Lord is asking, what is your name? He wants to hear from your mouth. What is your name? Church, are you willing to accept 
Are you willing to confess, Lord, this is my weakness. My name is Jacob. Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord wanted to hear from Jacob's mouth. And then he said, from today onwards, you're not going to be Jacob anymore. Your name is going to be Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because you struggled with God and men and you have won. The very name Israel means content, struggle with God. That's how the nation Israel got the name. Hallelujah. So today, you might be going through, you might have the name of Jacob. Maybe your family has called you a whore. Maybe your family members has called you different names. But church, can I speak to you today? The Lord is giving you a new name. He's taking your old identity out. He's going to give you a new identity today. He's giving you a new name, church. He's giving you a new identity in Christ. You're not that cheat anymore. You're not that deceiver, but he's changing your identity. He's changing your perspective. Hallelujah. God could change the name Abram to Abraham. Do, do you believe that? I mean, do you know that? God could change the name Sarai to Sarah. God could change the name Simon to Peter. God could change the name of Saul to a Paul. Hallelujah. Can you put your name in there? Can you put your name in there? Lord, my family, the world around me has, has a name for me, but I believe you're going to give me a new name, a new identity. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The angel is like, Jacob, you have a name, but that is not your destiny. You have a new destiny. You have a new purpose. You have a new identity today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So this is what we have the Lord's table in front of us. Can I tell you, this is what Jesus has done to us. We were not worthy to receive the blessing. We were Gentiles. We were strangers. We were aliens. But what did, what did Christ do? He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. That was contrary to us. He took it out of the way. He nailed it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Church, do you believe God has made you righteous? We sang those songs today. I'm blessed. I'm righteous. I'm anointed. I'm holy. How can you say that? We were sinners. But God loved us. God brought us into his fold. Hallelujah, you have been made righteous through his blood. Hallelujah, do you believe that church? Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are now made fellow citizens. You are made fellow heirs with the promise of God. Hallelujah, church. You were once away, but you have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. Your fellow heirs of promise, you are called saints. You are the heirs of God, your fellow heirs. You are called the children of God, as Dar said today. God is calling you as his sons and, and as, his, as his daughter. This privilege that God has given you through Jesus, just like the angel, just like God changed Jacob's name completely. He gave him a new identity. Today, as we come to the Lord's table, know that God has given us a new identity. We are not going to be known by our old name, but a new name God has given you. You are called blessed. You are called anointed. Can you just lay your hands upon your head and say, Lord, I am made righteous. I am justified. I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I am anointed. I am a child of God. Come on, go ahead and say that, church. I am anointed. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then as you follow the story, it says, Jacob, I mean, uh, Jacob the angel of God, touched the socket of Jacob's thigh and he was limping. He was limping. He wouldn't let him go. So the angel had to do that. Hallelujah. Of course, Jacob is now limping, but now he knows his identity, church. Of course, Jacob is not able to walk right now, but now he knows his purpose. He knows where he's going to. Hallelujah. Now he knows my name is not a deceiver anymore. I'm going to be a patriarch that will give birth to the 12 tribes of Israel. Out of my loins will come out 12 tribes of Israel. And out of one of those tribes will come the line of the tribe of Judah. 
Hallelujah. Out of my loins will come out nations. A scepter shall come out of Jacob. Hallelujah. Jacob now knows he has a new identity. He has a new purpose. Even though he is limping slightly. Church, can I prophesy that to you? Even though you might be having a health situation. You might be limping. There might be limp in your body. But truly believe now that you know that the purposes of God. There is, there is multitudes of nations that's going to come out of you. Hallelujah. God has called you to minister to the nations. God has called you to minister to the rulers, to the kings. Do you believe that, church? The enemy will, will whisper in you, your, your call, you don't even have the ability to speak. This is your name, but remind him of his future. Remind, when the enemy is reminding you, hallelujah, just tell him, the Lord has a great purpose for me. The Lord has mighty dest destiny for me. Hallelujah. So right now, after the encounter, Jacob is now able to face Esau. Right? The one who was running away in fear from Esau. Now he's able to confront Esau. Now he goes, you know the, the story. I don't want to go into it. Um, he prepares the entire camp. Now he's going to meet Esau. Right? So, and okay, the verse, the, as we read that particular scripture, it says, Jacob named that place Peniel, which means face of God, for he said, I have seen God's fa God face to face, yet my life has been spared. Hallelujah. Now you see, as you read the, those chapters, those verses, the, the Lord repeatedly tells Jacob, go back to Bethel, the place that I called you. Build an altar for me there. Go back to your calling. Go back to your calling. Hallelujah. Put, a, put, a, put away the foreign gods that's among you. So in Genesis 35, you will see Jacob calls his family forward and he says, put away those idols. Those idols have done us no good. Put them away. Sanctify. Put everything away. They're going back to Bethel. Can I tell you, church, the, church is, the, the Lord is calling us to the original calling, the first calling that God gave you in your life, the first encounter. Maybe you have ran away too far to Haran. Maybe you have ran away too far from Bethel, but God wants to bring you back to Bethel today. Am I speaking to somebody? God wants to bring you back to Bethel. There is a sanctification that is required. You cannot listen to the music that you are listening to. You, were not, you cannot read the books that you, that, that you used to read before. A sanctification, a cleansing is required. God is bringing you back to Bethel. And then it says, Jacob came to Bethel, which is in the, in the land of Canaan. And he built an altar and called the place, he gives a new name. He calls the place El Bethel, God of the house of God. El Bethel. He gets a new perspective. God, Jacob has got a new perspective of what is God. He calls the place El Bethel, the God of house of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So can I tell you, as, the Lord, as we are going to enter in the Lord's table, can I tell you, the ladder what Jacob saw in his first encounter, it is a bridge in the New Testament when you see Jesus who became the bridge between heaven and earth, church. You might ask me, how do you know that, Jerin? How do you know that? Can we just put the scripture up, please? It is in John 1, 47, please. 47, 51. As they approached, 47. As they approached, Jesus said, Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathaniel exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus asked him, do you believe this just because I told you and I had seen you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth, you will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is a stairway between the heaven and the earth. Church, do you believe there is only one mediator between heaven and earth? There's only one mediator who connected the heaven and the mankind. We, were not, we didn't have access to go to, the, to go to the Father. But Jesus who became the stairway. Jesus who became the ladder. Jesus who became the connecting wire. Jesus who became the mediator between God and man. Hallelujah. Because of him we, we have access to the Father. 
because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can come to the throne of grace with boldness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the one who bridges the gap. Hallelujah. So let this table remind you of the encounter that Jacob had. The stairway that connected heaven and the earth. The gateway of heaven where Jesus said, I am the gate. I am the only door. And you cannot enter the Father. You cannot see the Father without me. Hallelujah. You have complete access. The table shows us that. You have complete access to the Father through Jesus who became the bridge. Can I tell you one more thing? Because of what Jesus did on the cross, the power of sin is absolutely broken today. The power of sin is broken. There's no more dominion of sin over your life, church. Hallelujah, your old identity is gone completely. You have a new identity. You have a new name. You're no more the old deceiver. But you are the child of God. You're Israel. You're Israel. You're no more the supplanter. You're no more the deceiver. But you're called the righteousness of God. You're called holy. You're called justified. You're called redeemed. You're called sanctified through the blood of Jesus. Can we just read this one last scripture before Pastor Danes comes up for Lord's table? Romans 6, 6. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ. Can you put that up on the screen, please? Romans 6, 6. So that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know that we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death has no longer power upon you over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So also that you should consider yourself to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Harley, can we all just stand up for a moment, please? Can we all just stand up? The worship team can maybe come up, just get prepared with, uh, as, uh, as we're getting prepared for the Lord's table. Hallelujah, the word says, O worm Jacob, do not fear. Do not be afraid, you little Israel. I myself, I'm going to help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The word says, I will make you into a threshing floor, a threshing sledge. This is one of the scriptures that mentioned to me when I was growing up. I will make you into a threshing sledge, new and sharp with many teeth. You will thresh the mountains and crush them and reduce the hills to chaff. Church, you might think that I do not have the energy. I do not have the strength within me. Lord, I am weak, but today the Lord is calling us to a higher calling. The Lord is calling us to a higher calling. He, is go he wants to make you into a threshing sledge that you will crush the powers of darkness. You will have the power to crush the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. Do not fear, O worm Jacob, for I am with you. Do you want to know the power when God is with you? Hallelujah. The Lord says, I am that I am. I am that I am. I am the great I am. Hallelujah. Today you have access to the Father. You have access to the throne of God because of what Jesus did on the cross. If you are a person who has ran away far from the Lord today, can I ask you, God is giving another chance to come back to His calling. God is giving another chance to come back to Bethel. Your first encounter, the place where you had your first encounter with the Lord, He's calling you back to the first love. He wants to come back. He wants you to come back to the house of God. I know this might sound like a message of repentance, but if there's anyone who, if you want to surrender your life once again, Lord, I want to get back to my calling. I want to get back to my purpose, Lord. I might have drifted away for a moment. I might have drifted away from your purpose, but I want to get back. I want to come back to Bethel. I want to build an altar there, Lord. I want to have an encounter with you once again, oh Father. Hallelujah. If you are such person, if you have this kind of prayer in your heart, you can lift up your hands wherever you are. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Lord, I want to build an altar. 
even the encounter that I had with you, Lord, I'm supposed to lay that on the altar because that belongs to Jesus. That belongs to God. That encounter that the Lord gave you, it belongs to God. You're supposed to build an altar there. It is a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice. Lord, I'm coming back to my purpose. I'm coming back to my roots. I'm coming back to the first love. Come on, church. If you're true, if you're a person who's praying that, just lift up your hands. Hallelujah. In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will see dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Can you hold that, take hold of that promise? Can you take hold of that word? If you are someone, if you're a mother crying out for your child today, if you are a father crying out for your child, if you are a sister, if you're a brother crying out for a person, for that one person that you're praying for, Lord, that person needs an encounter with you, Lord. That person needs an encounter with you, Lord. Lord, I believe you're able to give him a new identity, a new name. Every encounter matters, church. Even one small encounter can change destinies, can change any situation. I need an encounter in my family, within my family. So this is my prayer too. Come on, just lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Come on, let this be a desperate cry before the presence of God. Lord, take me to that place. Take me to that place. When every music fades, when there's no more song, when there's no more music that I hear, Lord, I want to meet you in that silence. I want to come back to the heart of God. I want to come back to the heart of God, Lord. I want to come back to the heart of worship. I want to come back to the heart of praise today, Lord. This is a call meant for you. God is giving you a second chance. Do not let this moment go by, church. Do not let this moment go by. In my spirit, I can sense the Lord is speaking to a young person. I do not know who it is. Your mother has been praying for you. Your father has been praying for you. Someone has been praying for you to come back to the call of God. Do not miss this moment. Do not let this moment pass by. Come back. Come back to Bethel. Come back to the original calling of God. The Lord loves you. The Lord has chosen you for a purpose. The Lord has chosen you for a purpose. If there's any such person, can you please step forward? Can you please step forward? Let all the eyes remain closed. Don't look to your left, don't look to your right. But the Lord is calling you back. The Lord is calling you to a life of surrender. Come on. Whisper, whisper a prayer to him today. Come on. Lord, you have made me righteous. You have made me holy. You have cleansed me, Lord. I find my purpose in you, Lord. I find my purpose in you, Lord Jesus. Come on, begin to call him Abba Father. He is your daddy, God. He is your father. He is your friend in need. Come on. Church, don't hold back your voice. Lift up your voice. Come on, begin to lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Come on, church, wherever you are. Call out on his name. Come on, call out on his name. There is power in that wonder-working name. There is power in that name. Come on, church. There is power in your name, God. 
He will never fail you. He will never fail you. When you go through the waters, He is with you. When you go through the fire, He is with you, church. You are not here by accident, but God has brought you here. God has brought you with a purpose. And Lord, we thank you for what you have done on the cross of Calvary. We thank you for the shed blood of Father Lord. We know that you have cleansed us, you have sanctified us, you have justified us through your blood, oh Father. You have provided a way for us to come into your presence, oh Father. You have made a way, Lord. You have opened a way for us, Father. You have split the seas for us, oh Father. You made a way for us so, so we can enter into the throne of grace today, oh Father. You have become the stairway. You have become the ladder for us. You have become the mediator for us, oh Lord Jesus. And we just want to say that we love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you for who you are. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the shed blood of Father Lord Jesus. I pray for healing. I pray for divine intervention in Jesus' name, Father. In the days to come, let there be testimonies, Lord. Memorials of testimonies in Jesus' name, Father. Memorials of your goodness rising up from this place, oh Father. Come on, church. Lift up your voice. Continue to lift up your voice. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, the Lord is here. The Lord is here. He's ministering to the hearts. I can sense that he's ministering to the hearts. Shantara Daraba Shantare Darasya. 